from Stately Berglund Manor. This is Kurt Berglund with another installment of the Pine Tar Baseball Negro League's Great Teams set, now available on Kickstarter. We're doing 12 different segments featuring each of the 12 different teams that are in this set. The Negro League set ranges in years from 1910 with the Chicago Lelands all the way to the 1947 New York Cubans and 10 teams in between. These teams are set up for Pine Tar Baseball. Pine Tar is, I believe, the best baseball cards and dice simulation out there and you can find out a lot more about it and pick up the 1936 Negro League season for yourself at ttlbaseballgame.com, ttlbaseballgame.com, and I'll link that below. I'll also link the Kickstarter below this video here so that you can jump to that as well. The Kickstarter is going on right now. Uh, today is June 3rd, 2020. And we've already done two installments of this series. The first one was for the 1931 Homestead Grays. And yesterday's was for the, our second one was for the 1935 Pittsburgh Crawfords. Today, we're going back as far as we can go. And that's to the 1910 Chicago Lelands, owned and managed and... Uh, pitched, in part, by Rube Foster, maybe the single most important man in Negro League's history. Uh, for the impact that he had, he was not only an owner and a player and a manager, but he was also an organizer of leagues. Uh, so he is a big deal, and he is in this set. Now, Rube Foster saw an awful lot of Negro Leagues Baseball, and he said that this team was the best ever, the 1910 Chicago Lelands. Later on, this team in its franchise history became the Chicago American Giants. This team is ranked number nine all-time as a Negro League great team by Jim Riley, who wrote this book, the Biographical Encyclopedia of the Negro Baseball Leagues. Uh, Jim Riley was also a director of research for the Negro Leagues Museum in Kansas City. It is ranked number six all time by Dick Clark. Not that Dick Clark, but Dick Clark, the former co-chairman of Sabres Negro League Committee and co-editor of the Negro Leagues book, Volume 1. There was no Negro Leagues World Series in 1910. That didn't happen for 14 years to come. However, it did finish in first place in the Western Independent Clubs. Among Negro Leagues teams of its time in terms of pitching, <coughs> excuse me, this team was fourth in ERA. It was fourth in batting average against it was third in strikeout to walk ratio and third in whip. <coughs> Excuse me while I take a drink of water. What you'll find when you research Negro League's teams is that their roster sizes were typically between 14 and maybe 18 players on the high end, depending upon what ownership could afford. Well, back in 1910, not a lot could be afforded. And so this team has 14 players on its roster. However, three of them are members of the Baseball Hall of Fame. All right, so let's talk about the roster. It includes men, these following men, uh, Frank Wickware, Charles Doherty, Rube Foster, Bill Lindsay. Those are the four pitchers, four pitchers. Position players, Bruce Petway, uh, one of the all-time great catchers, probably one of the top three or four in Negro League's history. Pete Booker at first, Grant Johnson at second, Wesley Pryor at third, John Henry, Pop Lloyd at short, 
Frank Duncan in left, Pete Hill in center, Andrew Payne in right, and on the bench were Sam Struthers and Fred Hutchinson. Uh, so the pitchers were expected to uh, go the whole way. Now, one of the things, if you uh, uh, get this set for yourself and you say, well, I don't know much about some of these teams, I've written a PDF uh, with a one-page uh, summary of the um, pieces of the team that you need to know, including their roster, how they are ranked historically, uh, their batting order, at least a commonly used batting order. In pine tar baseball, you're free to adjust it, of course, however you see fit. And then uh, a couple of questions at the bottom of the page. Why will this team win your league or tournament? And then why won't this team win your league or tournament? So uh, let's talk about before we get to those questions, let's talk about some individual stats of players on the team and their batting order. Uh, the three, well, four biggest stars of the team include second baseman Grant Johnson, who had a slash line of 326 batting average, 368 on base, and 461 slugging. He was their cleanup hitter. Their probably best player, probably best known player is John Henry Pop Lloyd, 371 average, 385 on base, and 562, all coming from the shortstop position. He was called the Black Wagner, and Honus Wagner thought that that was an incredible compliment to Wagner. Uh, he saw Lloyd play and thought Lloyd was better than he was. Um you'll get a chance to decide that for yourself when you get the set. The third player is Pete Hill, center fielder, also a Hall of Fame member, uh, who had a 540 on base average in 1910, and he slugged 830. He was Cool Papa Bell before Cool Papa Bell, and he had more power than Cool Papa Bell did, and he threw better than Cool Papa Bell did. Uh, as far as throwing arm in the outfield. Uh, the ace of the staff is a man named Frank Wickware, who in 1910 had a 181 earned run average. Those are the four biggest stars of the team. Let's look at their uh, batting order. A commonly used batting order for this team includes Frank Duncan in left, Leading off, Pete Hill in center, batting second. Pop Lloyd at short, batting third. Uh, Grant uh, Johnson batting fourth at second. Andrew Payne batting fifth in right field. Pete Booker batting sixth at first base. Uh, Wesley Pryor batting seventh at third base. Bruce Petway uh, batting eighth and doing the catching. And, of course, the pitcher batting ninth. You're free to put them in any order you choose, but might be fun to try out the batting order that they used. Now, on this PDF file, I told you that I've a I'm asking the question of each team. Why will they win your league or tournament, and why won't they win your league or tournament? Well, let's take the first of those questions first, and that is why if this team wins it all, if this team is the best of the 12 that you get in this set, why will that be the case? Well, what I wrote is that Wickware and Doherty dominate their starts, and a thin pitching staff figures out how to keep the team in games while this speedy on-base percentage type offense drives defenses crazy. This is a dead ball team meaning that speed and range and forcing the opposition to make mistakes on defense is how they win ball games. And this team was awfully good at it. In the 1910 Negro Leagues, you're talking about three-man pitching rotations at max. League games were played on weekends, so really two starters were enough. 
Uh, Rube Foster was the third pitcher on this team, and he was an all-time great, but he was a little bit past his prime by 1910. And so if Wickware and Doherty dominate their starts, it's going to be tough uh, to beat these guys. Question two, why won't they win your league or tournament? What might trip these guys up? Well, it's a dead ball team. And if you've used dead ball teams in simulations before, you know that if they fall behind, it can be difficult for them to catch up because there isn't a lot of power. You're not going to get too many three-round homers from this group. However, they can drive defenses crazy with stolen bases and extra bases uh, on other outfield arms. If Wickware and Doherty prove to be mortal, therefore, and don't dominate their starts, and the third spot in the rotation gets hammered, this team's going to fall behind. And if this team falls behind, much like Whitey Herzog's Cardinals of the 1980s, it got tough for them to catch up. And that would be their Achilles heel. So that concludes our feature on the 1910 Chicago Lelands. Encourage you to check out the Kickstarter for the Pine Tar Baseball set that includes all of these teams, all 12 of these teams, in the set. And we're gradually, we have uh, nine to go after today uh, to tell you about. There is a 13th team that we created that didn't quite make the set. The 1934 Philadelphia Stars was a great team for pitching. Didn't score quite enough runs, we felt, to make the 12-team set. However, they were the 1934 World Series champions, and they did have famous and great players on their roster like Slim Jones and Judd Wilson. Now, if you would like that team for free, I will send it to you. Uh, if you send me an email, and I'll put my email below, and or if you'd rather, join our Facebook page, Pine Tar Baseball on Facebook. You can pick up the team in the files section of that Facebook page, Pine Tar Baseball. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me and letting me tell you about this set. We're very excited about it, and we think it honors the teams and the players of these teams that were so great in baseball history. My name's Kurt Berglund. Please click like and subscribe to my channel and come back tomorrow for our next feature, which will be the 1917 Chicago American Giants. And we'll tell you all about them at that time. Have a great day. So long, everybody.